Hello there guys, Mallspar1010 here, and today we're gonna play Space Cam. Because of, you know, like I already said, I've got a lack of the ability to play anything else all that reliably. Oh, whoops. So, let's go ahead and create a new profile here. Let's name it the exact same thing, because why not? Oh, apparently you can't, okay. There, that ought to do. Oh, eh, that's close enough. Oh, except... Oh, well, for, just forget it. Let's see. Start game. Of pancakes and spaceships. So... Here we have a bunch of explanation. I'm gonna skip it, because I already know how to play the game. At least, somewhat. Okay. So these start points here... These things are called Waldos. They run commands. And these, the red and blue lines, they follow along this path, and you drop the commands from this bar down here onto these to create commands that they execute. So, like it says here, this is an instruction which executes when matching when the matching wall though passes over it. This instruction accepts a molecule into the reactor, placing place a matching instruction in the highlighted sphere. Okay, why not? This instruction causes the wall though to attach and release on atoms. This will pick up the newly accepted molecule. I'm gonna make it a grab only. Oh. Okay, apparently it didn't want me to do that. This instruction redirects the wall to move in a new direction. Done. Each square can contain one arrow and one non arrow. This instruction causes the wall though to rotate. It is entirely unnecessary in this example. Wall stop moving when they collide inside of the reactor. If an atom collides with another atom on the side of the reactor, the simulation will be stopped. This instruction will cause the attached molecule to be released. This will drop the molecule into the psi output zone. Oh yes, and then we have to tell the psi output zone to output. And then we can go down here to the... Uh... To... Uh, whatever they call this. I guess just the... Play button. In, grab, move very slowly now, rotate, which does absolutely nothing, because if you've ever taken chemistry, the orientation of an atom doesn't make a difference for a molecule. Drop, out, and back to start. A little bit faster now. A little bit faster now. A little bit faster now. And there we go, assignment complete. Pretty easy, considering the game told us exactly what to do. Slightly different. Okay, let's see exactly how different it is. Um, more explanation that I don't care about. Okay, to solve this puzzle, we will use the blue Waldo, which behaves identically to the red Waldo, but executes only blue instructions. Which creates a blue bit input, drop a red alpha input instruction right click on the call. Yeah, see, I never... tab to switch to blue commands down here. And grab. Okay, now it wants us to do it on our own. What the? Shouldn't matter. Oh well. Let's see, the input and output are exactly the same, so this reaction does absolutely nothing. Let's make it more interesting and have both paths do the exact same thing. Let's make it just a little bit more sophisticated, shall we? Oh wait, except it needs to go over here, doesn't it? Let's see. Blue one. Do the exact same thing. Oops. Yeah, clicking outside the window is going to be a problem for me because my computer really can't run this full screen. It has to do it miniaturized. Let's see. Well, not miniaturized, but not in full screen. Okay. Tell the red one to grab only. Um, oh, it might help if we told it to input B. Grab, come over here, drop, output, W. I don't know what I don't know what symbol that is in Greek. I haven't studied up on my Greek uh, literature or alphabet for that matter. 
All right, and let's repeat the process for the blue line. And sync. Now what the sync button does, as you'll find in a minute here, oh, what did I do? We don't need this one. As you'll find is, uh, actually here, let's put the red run in front. That way they'll alternate. Uh, both wallows will start, and the red one will stop here at this sync, because it, it waits for the blue one to also hit a sync node. And then when, they, when they're both at the sync node, they both start moving together. That is an incredibly useful thing right there. It makes so many things possible. Because if you couldn't get them to move at specific points, if you couldn't get them to stop at certain points either, then you'd be so screwed. Here, drop. Oh. Oops. Look what I did. Hmm. Apparently, that does not work. Okay, fine. Tell you what. Let's try that. I don't do it right. Oh no. That's what I'm looking for. Let's see. Uh okay, you know what? I made this entirely too complicated. Just fantastic. There we go. Oh my goodness, now it's gonna give me a hard time. Look at this, I took one of the easiest puzzles and made it difficult. That is just awesome. Okay, let's move the start point then. Separate these things up a bit. Oh. Didn't like me, doesn't like me messing with the blue one at all. start point for the red has to be backed up even further. Look at this. Look at me. My goodness. I took something so simple and just had to make it difficult. Okay, there. God. Oh, I see a problem. They're not moving at the same rates anymore, so eventually they'll collide. That's funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Same rate. There we go. All right, that's completed. How about another one? Crossover. Uh, let's see. This time they're not going to give us any instructions. So let's see what we need to do. We need to take uh, gold and I think that's platinum. Yeah, that's probably platinum. And yep, we need to put it platinum up here and gold up here. That's no problem. Actually, that's really easy. Uh, let's see. Let's have the blue start here. Actually, no, let's start with the red first. Okay. Now, you have to pay attention to these grids because they're going to tell you exactly where on the grid the atom is going to appear. Later on, when we're actually making... Well, you'll see. You'll see why that'll become very important. Let's have this path go over here like this. And you don't have to, but it's good practice to have the uh, where you drop the molecule and out output it match what this says. It's good practice. Right now it's not required, but later you'll find that it'll help out a lot. So, in A, grab, come around, drop it, and output. And of course, we don't want the the blue and red ones to collide, naturally. So I'm going to have to put in some sort of fail-safe so that they don't just collide randomly. Because you know they will. Okay, I have an idea. 
let's use our handy dandy sink button. Let's use it twice as a matter of fact. So that they sync up when they get to their start points and they sync up that when this one is finished, this one just goes. I think that'll work nicely. Okay, so it's gonna go... Oh, look what I did. It's gonna input, it needs to grab, it'll come around, go up here, it needs to drop once it gets over here, and then output. Oh, wrong one. There we go. And then it comes around and we're good. So, let's see how well this works. Drop, out, sink. Grab. Wait a while. Drop, out. And sink. And repeat. Looks like they're all synced up pretty well. There we go. Very nice. So, let's move on. An introduction to bonding. Bonding and synchronization. Oh yeah, this is where they're teaching you about syncing, and then I'll just explain what the bonders do in a minute, because it's pretty self-explanatory. Oh. Okay, they want me to move the start up here. Oh, looks like they're gonna walk us through this one. See, I've forgotten most of this, because once you get into the later levels, <laughs> yeah. I've forgotten the solutions to these puzzles, because it's it's really just, you know, once you, uh, once you get to a certain point, you're not really focused on what you've done in the past, and your solutions will start to become incredibly complex, so. Yeah. Now, we need a bonder there. And we need a bonder there. Now it's going to have a sink. And it's going to have a sink. It wants us to drop. And bond. So yes, the bond command will cause whatever is on the bonders. If there's two atoms next to each other on the bonders, they will become bonded. You can also tell the bonders to unbond things that are already bonded. Of course, we need to tell it to output. No, we're going to drop it right on that bonder there. I like to move those out of the way. Ones that I don't use, I throw in a corner. Okay. And if the program told, I mean, if the uh, game told us to do it right, that should work just fine. Looks like it. Of course, we didn't get to design that one. So I think we'll move on. I think we'll just go to the end of this planet and call it a day. Okay, bond progression. Yep, this is how it works. If two, if two atoms are sitting on the bonders unbonded, you tell them to bond once, and they'll have a single bond. If you tell them to bond again, they'll have a double bond and a triple bond, and the triple bond, of course, is the maximum you can have. However, based on the atoms involved, you may not be able to get to triple or even double. Sometimes you can only have one bond between things, particularly hydrogen atoms and anything else, because hydrogen atoms can only bond once. You've also got your bond minus commands, which are very important too. So, it wants us to take hydrogen, chloride, uh, chlorine and make hydrochloric acid. No problem. We can do that. Very, very simple. Move the stuff we're not going to be using. Let's see here. We get in, grab, and we bring it on over here. We're just going to replicate the program that they gave us last time, really. Except with a few minor changes that I will provide myself, just to make this go a little more, you know, smoother and quicker in general. Oh, well the output needs to be over there, so let's have this go like this. And because when 
Yeah, well, you'll see how I'm gonna do it. Let's see. Blue one has to have sync right here. Because uh, the blue one is the one that's going to be going to the output, we're going to have the red one drop what it's holding in position, and these two will be on the same path, and... Oh, well, not a red one. We'll have the blue bond, and so it'll be holding on to both from this atom, and it's going to come over here. But if we drop it here, the other one will be in the uh, psi output, and that will be wrong. So, we have to drop it one lower so that it fits, and then we can say, out. And then it comes over, starts over. Should be fine. Bam. Drop, out, that's one. Six, seven, eight, nine. Speed it up a bit. And last level, removing bonds. Okay, this is pretty self-explanatory too. We take in uh, two fluorine atoms that are bonded and output one fluorine at a time. Um, so, I don't, we don't even need the blue one for this really, but I'll use it just to make the program go a bit faster. So we're gonna have the blue start in that direction. Red is going to start here. And none of these solutions I've got memorized. These are just coming up with as I go along. So I'm, I mean, I'm coming up with them as I go along. Let's move these up one. Make this go just a bit faster. If you can make your programs as efficient as possible, that's all that's required. Okay, we're going to want these guys to sync. So, let's go ahead and make sure that we put a sync at right behind the start so that they both start at the same time. So we're going to grab a bonded fluoride molecule. I think it's fluoride. No, it's still fluorine, I think. Um, it's been a while since chemistry, guys. Let's see, then we're going to bond minus. Okay, now here's... Hmm. There's a problem with my program already we've actually got to go around because see what'll happen is when it removes the bond that other fluorine atom will be hanging out there and then we'll have ourselves a problem okay now let's adjust the blue one to do what it needs to don't forget to put our sink there so that they know to start at the same time Oh, wait. Mm-hmm. Yep. Look at this. The red one needs to tell the blue one when to go. Namely, we should have it like this, actually. Except... Here, let's move this back one. Give us a little bit more working space. Move the start back this sink here so that it knows when to go because that fluoride that fluorine atom won't be there forever and then it'll move one precisely one space drop it and output remember right now the their relative position in the output field doesn't matter but in the future it very much will it's not right now so I'm not worrying about it I'm just making the programs as efficient as possible so over Drop it there, <clears throat> and out. That should work. If it doesn't, I'm stupid. Bond, drop, out, sink, wait, drop, out, sink. Faster now. Faster now. There we go. And here we are on the second planet. So, guys, this has been Miles Power 1010 bringing you Space Cam Action. Uh, please subscribe and like, and I will see you guys next time for Planet 2, Cernomir 4, where we will get into double bonds, and I'm pretty sure down here, one of these four down here is when we get into the real serious shit. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.